So let's check out how we'll survive today. The intro starts like this. It's like an E7 chord with a flat 9. So it's more so like an easier way to think about it would be like, okay, not a G sharp diminished. Like let's even say an F diminished over an E, something like that. So we have E. And then our arpeggio goes all the way up to the highest F on your piano. And then back down to that F where you started. You can do an E at the end too, I think that sounds better. The song doesn't actually end on E, but anyways, so something like... And then we can start off with the first verse. The first verse we're going to be doing ad lib, or free time, kind of like a ballad style. So I'd play the melody up one octave. So we have room to do some arpeggios in the left hand. It's really nice. You can play like your E chord in your right hand. And you can match that melody with the bass. It's one nice thing that you can do. And then after that, you can get into time. So it's done. And then we're into verse two. So for verse two, we're going to do a specific rhythm. So it's going to be like one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three. That's going to be the rhythm. So for the A minor chord, I'm adding a nine. And a D minor chord, I'm going to play like that. And then I'm going to go into this regular, just these seven chords. Just that same way. C major seven, F, that same sort of pattern. Something like that. So, and then we're into verse three. So, again, we copied the melody with the bass, the tenth below. Now verse 3 is going to sound really cool if you can do it with shell voicings. If you if you can't reach that, I mean even though it's broken, if it still feels like if you still have really small hands and it's really tough for you, then you can move and just do some, some basic chords or you can do everything in this position. But yeah, even with, with basic chords, it's going to sound okay. Mostly, it's mostly about the rhythm, it's not so much about the notes. But yeah, we're going to use shell voicings with one, seven, three, and then one, three, seven. One, seven, three, one, three, seven. One, seven, three, one, three, seven. And then here we'll just probably play. Um, I'm not sure what we We just play some octaves and then we'll set that up again. Yeah, so there we're just going to play octaves, I think. We'll see. So, so that same rhythm one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, but before each of those, so we play one E, so that's like an eighth, then sixteen eight, sixteen, so one E, one E and a two, so like. 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E. But it should really feel like the same rhythm as the verse 2. Just having that. So having that in between the hands. Um, and you can also add the fifth into that. So that. bit more of a bass line. And then we're into the, the chord. 
chorus. So, way down. And for the chorus, we're going to be playing. Um, it'd be great if you could play chords in your right hand. two notes from the chord in your right hand and then the melody on the top as well as some walking bass the broken octave so the first thing to do would just be working out without the walking so and after you can do that what you're going to do is you're going to use four notes to get from one chord to the next a lot like walking bass if you've ever done walking bass so that would be so the main rule is the first note needs to be the chord so like a minor and the last note needs to be one note that's going to be one note away from the next chord usually chromatically one note away or it can also be diatonically one note away so either one note in the scale or one chromatic note but just one note away from the chord so the first one has to be the root note the second can be whatever the third can be whatever and the fourth one needs to be something that's going to set up the next chord. And I think when we're doing it in our left hand, although the second and third can be whatever, it makes a lot of sense to try to connect the chords using some sort of scale walking along. Like one, two, three, four, one. Or one, two, three, four, one. Those will be, I think, the more cliche or common bass lines that are definitely worth using. So. the chords yeah so that's going to be a little bit too much to do that all the time so you have to alternate between maybe going up like and maybe going down once same way it's harder to do chords here like it's harder to do chords there so you can even just play without without the chords so the instrumental will sound something like this verse or a little bit of a solo up to you whatever you want to do on that next part again shell voicings work really nice for playing the harmony of this song so a couple little details that i want to say the arpeggio at the beginning the intro should be pretty free Well, it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be something like that. In time, it can it should speed up and then slow it down again. Something like that. It should have some sort of an arc. For the ad lib section. I, you can also do it with small arpeggios or four or five, six notes in them only. That's also fine. 
So in the subsequent verses, verse 2 and 3, there is a lot of this repeated rhythm, this. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So what I would work on is I would work on that rhythm with the left hand rhythm. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Doesn't even have to. Don't even have to do it with like the right notes. Just getting that rhythm. Until you feel really comfortable with that, then you can start to apply that to the song. Once you get a little bit comfortable with that, the rest of the song will be easy. And then do the same thing for verse 3, but with that added bass note. So. Again, that rhythm comes up a lot in verse 3 as well.